Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about DevOps. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, have you ever worked in a DevOps environment? Is it something pushing devs into networking as it is doing with network people into software? It would be nice to hear your opinion. So I'm guessing what your question here is like is DevOps um, that um, paradigm of working pushing software developers into like a network type of deal or networking administrative work and so forth uh, and I'm, I'm guessing what you mean is that because like a lot of network administrators are realizing that it's becoming more and more mainstream to use cloud solutions and so forth which means that there's less work so they get pushed into software and of course the complexity of the work goes up as well so software becomes uh, something that they can, might have to uh, learn as well uh, even if you're like an administrator like a regular um, uh, admin uh, software development skills are getting more and more relevant um, I have worked uh, for quite some time in a DevOps environment but it, it, that's the tricky part with DevOps uh, depending on like I mean it very much depends on what you mean by DevOps because it's it's one of those tricky terms where if you want to go with the like the definition of what it means it's really hard to actually say that you're doing DevOps ever because every company will say that they do DevOps in some form but they can't really answer what what does that actually mean uh, the cl I would say that the loosest and probably the most the closest thing to an accurate definition we can give on DevOps is to say that I use this what is the what is the saying you build it you run it something like that or you build it you own it you ship it you own it and the idea is basically that e each team in a software company is responsible for their own application and so forth and so forth uh, traditionally that's not how it has been working uh, it's usually the case that you have some type of operations team or a team that is l responsible for uptime and on calls and like all of that stuff uh, but yes I have worked in this environment and the the, tr the, the thing that I see right now uh, is I'm not saying that we're going full-fledged to DevOps because I, I, I really don't see that happening all that much uh, except for in very small companies in very small companies you have dev you, you almost have it organically because there's really no other way of doing it because you can't afford anything more serious so basically what you have is usually one team of software developers and you have like all of them they have access to their own infrastructure or uh, one or two of them have access to their infrastructure and you, since they're in the same team like hey you're, <laughs> they ship it they own it right or they ship it they uh, they maintain it and that's a very organic thing but as the company grows that becomes less and less feasible in my experience I know that uh, some like very zealous religious uh, people uh, that want to really define this term are going to say that well you should have one if you're doing real DevOps you should have one operations person per team or someone who is working w within the team in order to maintain the uptime and so forth what I see most commonly is that there is a certain level of responsibility that the team has at uh, each team and it's usually things related to like they they own their own, in some cases their own release cycle uh, they own their own test environment or things like that like they consume something that an operations team or a, a central uh, I said like, I don't want to call them DevOps but let's let's just call them operations team a central operations team that maintains all of this so in other words if your team needs a certain amount of virtual machines or whatever you're using uh, you make a request to that team and they spin up those resources and then like you have if you just using something like Kubernetes you might have your own namespace for your team or your own cluster or something like that and so you as the software development team like you consume that 
and then each company has a little bit of a strategy for it like um, that might be what they're doing like the central team might be taking care of that sort of stuff and making sure that the the cloud solution or the hardware or whatever that that's running that everything's working etc etc and they usually are the central hub which means that they're usually in charge of making sure that everything is secured and so forth and so forth and providing like logging services and etc etc right and then the teams um, depending on strategy they own their own uptime so they ship things and like they deploy they consume like the CI the CI pipeline solution that the central team is has put in place uh, they consume the services provided to them by the central like the ops team and so forth and then they might be responsible for alerts and so forth themselves but in and but that's not always the case in many situations it's also the case that the ops team is also responsible for the for the on call and the uptime of whoever like of the team's application so the team really only is responsible for shipping things uh, and consuming something in like a test environment or so forth now the reason why I argue that things are are this way and it's like a lot of companies they want the teams to be in charge of the both the release uh, of the, whatever software they're shipping, right? But also be in charge of the uptime and the on call and so forth is because it's really it's it's usually fairly ineffective. Uh, and when if you release a bug into production, it's really rare that the like the ops team can do much about it. The standard tactic is usually either to call whoever shipped something, like they, they call, like they are the first line of defense, so they get the call and then they have to call the software developers. Uh, or just do a rollback where they ship, like they go back to the previous version of the code until the problem can be fixed. Uh, that's not unfortunately always possible. Uh, but that's a different video. Uh, so a lot of companies that you—that's what the DevOps thing kind of is. Like you want the team to own it because they're the ones who are m closest to the code. They're the one who who shipped it, so they are the most likely people to, to be able to fix the problem, right? So, uh, in a sense, this is I, 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 as the systems are growing more more, more complicated, uh, you're being pushed as a software developer. Uh, in some cases at the very least into taking more responsibility for the code that you ship but I would not go as far as to say that software developers are being pushed into being like DevOps engineers or anything like that it's more uh, the thing that I think is happening is that you are being introduced to a new suite of tools such as say Kubernetes, Terraform, whatever, whatever, right? Uh, and some, in some cases you're gonna learn, have to learn how to use these tools just to do your regular development work. So what I want you to take away from this is that in a sense with the rise of Docker and containerization, Kubernetes, etc, etc, and cloud providers and cloud solutions and so forth, uh, the role of software developers, I wouldn't go as far as to say that you're being forced to become like DevOps engineers, uh, but it is becoming an increasingly re relevant thing for you to know about uh, as a software developer. Uh, in many cases I would go and say that most companies have a central team that is like still an ops team or something like that if it's a big company because it's really really hard to coordinate things if like every team is doing their own thing you need usually something central to manage all of the complexity and like the cross-cutting stuff and that's usually what that team is there to do and then the teams themselves and have like their own like environments and so forth that they use and uh, as a software developer you learn or you, you get introduced how to use these sorts of environments and these environments are usually used through tools such as Kubernetes, Docker um, or like a cloud provider of some sort or and CI, CI solutions like Jenkins, GitLab, what have you, right? Uh, so learning how to be a consumer of these things is definitely something that is extremely relevant uh, for most software developers, I would say, uh, if you're if you plan, and it's almost inevitable that you're going to be introduced to this sort of stuff if you work at any type of meaningful scale. Have a great day.